why are you holding back? Don't you want to be with me? It's not that, it's just everything is going so fast. I mean, this is our first night out, you know. Are you saying I'm too pushy for you? A little. It's just, I don't think I'm ready to get serious with anybody right now. Who said anything about getting serious? I just wanted to get together with you and have some fun, you know, full around. First time I met you at Julie's party, I wanted to be with you. Well, maybe you don't understand what I'm trying to say, but when Julie fixed us up to go on this hayride together, I was really excited about it. I mean, you are really cute, and I haven't been out with a lot, lot of girls. I just never had any girl treat me the way that you have. Well, I'm sorry. I don't mean to come on so strong, but it's just that I, I really like you, and I want you to know it. You know? So why don't you come a little closer? Come here. This is the night of heavenly fright. Witches on broomsticks are up to their tricks, and poltergeists quail to the moon, which looks like a silver balloon. Frankenstein's monster is having a ball, scaring the goblins right off of the wall. Hello, and welcome to the Spooky Doom Time Hour, hopefully less, with frickin' Bones Jeffrey, and I'm a ghosty Richard. Ow! Oh, folks, Halloween season is here. I didn't think we were gonna make it, and we're recording this way in advance, so maybe <laughs> we, we, we didn't. Yeah, odds are not in our favor. <laughs> Hi, we're dead, but it's good to hear from you. Uh, yeah, well, we're, we're ghosts now. We're the Statler and Waldorf of ghosts. <laughs> hey, when you're dead, you don't care. It's cool. You're like, oh, I was scared of dying. Not anymore, brother. <laughs> it rules. <laughs> so here we are. It is once again our our finely crafted Halloween show. <laughs> and uh, this time we're going to talk about Flesh Eater from 1988. A.K.A. Uh, Zombie Nosh, if you're British, the <laughs> the Japanese title. I I did I folks. I am not trying to do an English joke. This is literally what Google Translate translated it to. Fresh eater zombie crowd. Well, okay. So I do have to say he is a fresh eater because <laughs> he only likes them fresh. He won't eat a corpse. <laughs> Uh, the Russian title was really funny. It translates to Flesh Eater. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this other alternate title here is Revenge of the Living Dead, which is um, its also, most common title. Isn't that the alternate title of Zader as well? Yes. Very okay. confusing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, this also had Revenge of the Living Zombies, which I really like. That was the... That was the um, the working title was Revenge of the Living Zombies. I mean, I gotta say, they should have found a better title. Flesh Eater definitely kept me away from this movie for way too long. Mm-hmm. Because it sounds so bad. I mean, <laughs> now, I mean, ha being intimately familiar with this movie, I do like the, the title Flesh Eater because I like just calling Hinsman's character Flesh Eater. Yes. Oh, that's that's the Flesh Eater. I just uh, keep calling him Bill. <laughs> Uh, I wrote that I refer to him in my notes primarily as the hens. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like it's it's not it's not particularly a fitting title for this film. And I feel like it might be why, like part of the reason why it's not as well known as it should be, I think. Right. Well, I, I've I've draw parallels to this and the sequel that Russo. Uh, what's his name? Uh, John, John. John Russo. Yeah. Thank you. He wrote a, a Dawn of the Dead book before Dawn of the Dead mm. came out, and it was not what they used at all for the screenplay for Dawn of the Dead. 
And this movie has some things in common with that book, which is weird because John Russo is not involved in this. Uh, instead, we just have Mr. Hinsman, who was uh, he was the, the first zombie we see in Night of the Living Dead. Yes. Iconic. Absolutely. He's milking it. Just milking it here. And you know what? He's still got he's still got the stare into the camera glare. Yeah, he's still got that blouse ripping charm. <laughs> um this movie is I think I think it's important to note up front, it's not really a zombie movie. I mean at least that's how I feel. It's kind of like a witchcraft devil magic flesh eater movie, which is different than a zombie movie. And despite the fact that it 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 rips off various scenes from George Romero's zombie movies, it's still just not really in any way that's meaningful. As it doesn't operate like other zombie movies do. It's got its whole other way of progressing through plot, of <laughs> introducing and quickly disposing of characters um it's on a whole other level i think <laughs> that like if you're just looking for your standard bog issued uh, uh uh no it's bog standard standard issue zombie movie you're not gonna get it right you, it's you're something getting else fucking flesh eater <laughs> you're getting something hmm uh but this is actually a halloween movie it, it tries to deny us <laughs> but somewhere in the last uh half hour they kind of doubled down on the halloween goodness yeah it starts off very halloweeny and it ends well or like yeah i mean last maybe uh it's it's in the fourth fifth of it <laughs> that it becomes halloweeny again um but the uh the the menu on the blu-ray release which is sadly out of print um it looks pretty good for a media blasters release so it's oh, sad good. that it's it's out of print um the menu has the promotional images that are that are used for like the post most of the poster art today that were clearly done in like you know 2000 and whatever rather oh, than boy. 1988 um but the the menu has like these photoshopped autumn leaves like yes. swirling through the yes. air uh, around the the flesh eater and his victim and it's such a good mood it just uh, transports me uh i have the 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 shriek show dvd with the same exact shit yeah because i had never seen it before i bought this was a a basically a blind buy because i'd only ever heard people talk shit about this movie and so I avoided it and avoided it. Then I saw it was made in 88. And yeah. I was like, dude, <laughs> that's all I needed to tell me. Let's yeah. do this. It can't be that bad. So I got it. And this freaking DVD is just packed with good stuff. It's got the whole behind the scenes. And it's got the freaking uh, the pizza commercial. Oh, my God. The pizza commercial. <laughs> Ooh, it's so so good. lame. It's, oh, I mean, it's so, <laughs> so good. good. I didn't say lame. No, not me. No. So here, here's the trailer. I found the uh, the trailer. I really love this one. It's a Revenge of the Living Zombies trailer. So, oh God, come on! <laughs> no, it's a Revenge of the Living Zombies trailer. So I'll, I'll drop that in here now. It's a Zombie Nosh trailer. Hello, Governor. Can I get a Zombie <laughs> Nosh? Oh yeah, yeah, rah, rah, rah. Come on, man, those things are right behind us. It's too late! Go find someplace else to hide! Oh, you bastard! They're gonna come soon, okay? So I found the Magnum uh, entertainment VHS tape, of course, not in my possession, merely 
a Google search away. Mm -hmm. uh, good old vhscollector.com, which I don't even know if it's still an active thing. I know, you, yeah, I so know. the images still work. So yeah. God bless them. Or, uh, or the devil or Satan. Whoever. Curse them! It's Haunted Ween. Oh, 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 wait, we need to do Haunted Ween sometime. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Brad Hogue uh, interviewed that director. It's on uh, doomedmoviethon.com. So. Wow. Wow. Just when you thought the dead were buried, dot, 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 experience your most dreadful nightmare become reality as an innocent outdoor sleepover becomes an endless night of sheer terror. Eddie and eight of his friends planned to spend one night on Spencer's farm. What they hadn't planned on was falling prey to the flesh-hungry, quote-unquote, undead. As the blood spills and the body count climbs, so do the odds against the survivors as each murdered victim rises again to feed on the helpless living. Approximate running time, 88 minutes. Correct. That is accurate. Mm -hmm. the, the minute count, that is. And the, and the synopsis. Very good. Oh, thank you. I just read. I just learned to read. <laughs> uh, this had some cuts made to it by the uh, good old uh, Wichemhusets British people, BBC, or whoever censors movies over there. Uh, I think it's the Queen. <laughs> she said, I don't care for this. It's yeah. Yucky Patupu. Mm-hmm. Yucky Patupu. Sorry, folks. I'm dropping too many honest-to-goodness British <laughs> things people say. Simon taught me that one. Britishisms. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, so, we're going to get into this thing. Folks, spoilers. Um, I found the DVD super cheap, so I, I, I maybe it's still out there. I. Yeah. You said the Blu-ray's out of print. The Blu-ray's out of print. It goes for like 50 bucks. I paid a little bit less than that oh, um, good. <laughs> like a year ago. Uh, so good luck. Uh, it's worth it, but good luck. Godspeed to you, DVD and Blu-ray finders. Yeah. Uh, so this is a Hinsman production. We get the, uh, excuse the... me. Excuse me. It says a Bill Hinsman joint. <laughs> it's an irregular font party. <laughs> this is edited... Screenplay, story, produced, directed, starring, craft services by Bill Hinsman. Wow. So he he directed um, The Majorettes and this. He directed The Majorettes? That's what freaking IMDb what? says. I did not know that. I, I thought love The Majorettes. For some reason, I had just assumed that John Russo directed The Majorettes. That's crazy. And he did that the year before this. Whoa! Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I love the, I love the Majorettes. It's so weird. That's one um, of the strangest movies. It's so it's, fun. The the tonal whiplash as it turns <laughs> from a horror film into an action film. Yeah, it starts it's, like a ripoff of um, the Prowler a little yeah, bit yeah. by way of God knows what, and then it just goes off into freaking Rambo land. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yes, it does. Dude, it's so wonderful. Uh, but wow. yeah, Hinsman was in a lot of uh, other good old uh, George A. Romero things like Night of the Living Dead. Uh, I don't even know why I just said that. Uh, Season of the Witch, uh, Crazies, Night Riders. So he did work with them. This movie just feels like a freaking George Romero said, I don't want to be involved with this bill. Please, no. <laughs> Well, <laughs> so did you watch the documentary? A little bit. A little bit. Okay. I got a little annoyed with the, uh, the, the, I don't know what I got annoyed with. <laughs> okay. Well, at one point, Hinsman claims that he sent promo photos of him in the makeup and, you know, with a letter that they were like making the movie and he sent it to Romero and received a cease and desist letter. It was like, I don't care. I'm going to make my movie. Uh, yeah. I don't know if that's true. I mean, it kind of sounds fake, but they also didn't work together again after that. So yeah, he definitely didn't get his blessing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we get the score, um, which I was talking to you about before we were <laughs> recording. Uh, the score is done by someone named the music is by Erica Portnoy. And uh, she did this and she did the score for a tales from the dark side episode. Mm hmm. Um, and I've been wrestling. I really don't like this music. I don't like this score. It's one of the uh, the only truly 
bad things. I only have like two complaints about this movie. This one of them. But the score, I was listening to it on YouTube, and I actually like it. Mm. Separate from them. I separate from them. I like it. I love it. I want more of it. Yeah. And I separate it from the movie and it sounds pretty neat. And I don't know if it's just this because the sound is so sloppy on this freaking movie that you can't hear the best parts of the the score because all you hear is that same piano part over and over. And then that same piano part played slower and then faster and slower. When you hear the score, you actually hear that there's a drum machine and a bass and it's like dynamic in a way that it does not come through on the DVD. <laughs> mm. So I don't know. Gotta go back to the master tapes. Oh, well, I'll meet you there. We'll <laughs> ride our broomsticks right over there. <laughs> Where we're going, we won't need master tapes. <laughs> we'll have uh, we'll have uh, Marnie and her grandma send over a couple of brooms for us. Take a freaking skeletal, skeletal <laughs> taxi cab. Hell yeah. So I, I really love the approximately four and a half seconds of animated intro yes. where the flesh eater goes. Dude, it's so cool. I love that. I wish that was the whole movie. That was so great. And I love when it's followed up by the on-screen text uh, incantation, uh, which reads, quote, This evil which will take flesh and blood from thee, and turn all ye on. Uh, I mean, uh, turn ye unto (laughs) evil. It'll just turn you on. So this evil will turn ye on to evil. Sure. That is what happens. It's true. They they were so proud of that text, they carved it into a prop later. It's going to be great. (laughs) I mean, I love that. I know. It's because it's... (laughs) Again, like this isn't like traditionally a, a zombie movie. It's like a, there's some sort of weird magical incantation that is uh, restricting the flesh eater from rising back onto Earth and taking victims. And that incantation is like hinting towards zombies being like a magic thing, right? Like a demonic thing. Yep. Like it's that the incantation is just describing what happens with a zombie. It's like, oh, they'll bite you and you you will also turn into a zombie. It's a weird take. I I mean, I honestly outside it's like almost hearkening to like voodoo zombie type stuff. Yeah. But in a totally different direction. I, I've i never seen anything quite like it. I love Cause, it. Because you get bit, you turn into a zombie. Also, if you get killed by a zombie in any way, you come back as well. Unless they like totally eat you, which also right. happens, or destroy your brain, because they still get killed by a gunshot yeah. to the brain. Yeah, weird, weird shit. He's yeah. he's up on his own plane of existence. Here. <laughs> I think he he wrote the scenes and then had to adapt the logic to it later, and then also didn't. <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, we cut to a hayride. Oh my god! And uh, we got a, a denim clad. Uh, mullet-infused gang of good time Charlies. <laughs> These Charlies are cracking cold ones. <laughs> they have some Altman-esque overlapping dialogue, oh mostly about passing cold ones and taking yes. on responsibility for buying cold ones. Yes. Um. Yeah. What I would like to do for the Halloween season is just put two LCD screens next to each other and then loop this opening and the opening to Hack a Lantern. <laughs> and it's just the perfect autumnal Halloween vibes. Oh, yeah. You know it's Halloween because they have some plastic uh, Jack o' Lantern um, receptacle, candy receptacles. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's God, so I half assed. I mean, and that's why. Like when I found out this was a Halloween movie, I got really excited. And then I saw the, the hayride and those little plastic dealies. I was like, oh, that's going to be it. But boy, was I wrong. I was glad I was wrong. <laughs> we stop and we, we have our pal Eddie, the only character's name that I can remember. Other than I, I think I did okay. There's a lot of very samey people here. Yeah. Uh, Eddie I, is the I, asshole. Most relatable because I'm an asshole. So I love him. He plays the role of the asshole up until the point where the movie has no longer any need of him. 
<laughs> because <laughs> the movie decides to go off in a totally different direction. Oh but he does God. a good job at first. You know, he yes. he's he's kind of filling the role of the bald guy from Night of the Living Dead, the asshole. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, he literally <laughs> fills that role later. Exactly. Um, he's got some good lines. His accent's kind of weird. Like here, he's he's trying to spook everybody. And he continues to prank people for the next, you know, 15 minutes or so. He has a great line where he says, you know, I bet these woods get pretty goddamn scary at night. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this was filmed in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, Beaver oh. Falls, Carapolis, Edgeworth and Pittsburgh. I say these things like I know what I'm talking about. I've only been to Pittsburgh one time. Leah and I drove through, got out of the car wrote in the, the funicular that goes up a hill mm-hmm. and then wrote it back down and then got in the car and then left Pittsburgh. But it looked like a very pretty city. I feel like this makes so much sense because this definitely sounds like um, it's Pennsylvania, but it's like definitely right outside of a metropolitan area. That's how right. I would describe these accents. Yeah. One girl sounds like she's from Jersey. I'm I'm really confused. Yeah, well that is that's that's it right there. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. So Eddie spins a tale. He says he tells of an urban legend. Um and man, it's as haunting as freaking Mothman and oh my god, like Slenderman. I was like It's as uh, haunting as a man's hand and a dog's mouth. Dude, I was terrified. I was like I was messed up about it. Uh he, he claims that this happened to his cousin. And then someone says, Eddie, what an asshole. Yeah, all of his friends like don't take him seriously at all. They're just like, we really need to get Eddie high. He's, he's He needs to relax. There's no marijuana in this freaking movie. I was I was kind of shocked. It's all beer. <laughs> so much beer. There should have been some freaking bongs. Uh let's see. We see a farmer uh pulling up a stump. He's out in the woods there while they're going out to their <clears throat> wooded destination for this evening of uh, Halloween frivolity, which sounds really fun. Just hanging out in the in the woods in the dark. Cool. He pulls up a stump with his tractor. Uh, the fact that there's a tractor driving man is going to be very important in a bit because it's gonna it's all going to come together. I swear yeah, it's going to be yeah, great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He finds underneath this <laughs> this stump a pentagram stone. Uh, and he and he lifts this stone. He blames college kids. <laughs> it's it's a prank. You know them goddamn rock burying college kids. <laughs> what with their uh, their freaking constant ding 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 as they carve into stone. I'm so sick of that shit, dude. Them kids burying their giant ravioli looking <laughs> joke pendants in the ground. Fucking How stone dare masons. <laughs> Uh, there's a grave underneath, and it has the uh, this plaque on it with, of course, the this evil which will take flesh and blood from the and turn all ye onto evil is you know they actually doubled down on that freaking thing. It reminded me of the uh, the headstone in uh, the the gibberish headstone in City of the Living Dead. Yeah, I love it. And uh, he he lifts that up too, and then underneath is a grave, <laughs> and he finds uh, Bill Hinsman taking a nap. Which I love this, how young Bill Hinsman was when this was shot, because he always looks old because of the makeup they have on him. So when they're doing those behind the scenes photos in the the 2000s, he looks like as old as they thought he actually was. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But he's he's taking a nap and he wakes up after the farmer, the the tractor guy calls him one ugly son of a bitch. Bill wakes up and he eats the gentleman of the tractor variety. He eats him in the throat area. God bless him. Mm-hmm. And we get some real good squirting. At this point and moving forward from here, we have a shit ton of gore and it's all so good. Yes. Um, it's not. Sometimes it's like kind of in your face gore. Other times it's a little bit more subtle bloodshed, but it's always well done. I feel like. This did not have a large budget at all. In fact, I saw mm-hmm. it was 60,000. I think I think 59,000 of it went to all of the special effects. I think you're right. <laughs> um I'm looking up the people who worked on the effects. 
Uh, the one dude, uh, Natalka Voslakov, uh, worked on Day of the Dead, worked on Bloodsucking Pharaohs in Pittsburgh and Creepshow. I forget I've actually seen Bloodsucking Pharaohs in Pittsburgh. That's who would have thought. Uh, but Jerry Gurgley, I do not know if I'm saying his name correctly. Um, he worked on Majorettes, the Night of the Living Dead remake, uh, the aforementioned Bloodsucking Pharaohs in Pittsburgh. Then he worked on Babylon 5 a bunch. Uh, lots of face uh, applications there, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's on the, the, oh, also on the special effects crew for the My Bloody Valentine remake. Okay. Oh, some fun stuff there. But yeah, I totally agree. The gore is uh, pretty superb. And endless. Just absolutely endless. <laughs> it never stops. No. <laughs> then the kids, uh, we cut back to the kids having a little dance party. They've broken out the boombox, the stereo. <laughs> okay, you're over, are listening you are, to, what's you are that? overselling it. Oh. <laughs> this, is, this is a one-sided dance party. They're listening to a song that says, do you know the name of the song? not now, sure Let i don't either that. but it, it goes if you're having fun you know you want to dance and all of the girls do while their boyfriends just continue to sit stationary like watching them yes it's so awkward um everyone's <laughs> clad in denim from from top to bottom oh boy. <laughs> the, the there's three songs well, there's four songs in the movie um, they're all by something called Hedge, A H E D G G. That's how it's spelled. <laughs> okay. Um, that song is called "Do You Want to Dance?" Do you uh, want there's to a dance? there's another song by Hedge called "Starting Over," and there's the most uh, catchy, the one they're famous for is "Working for the Weekend," which you know everybody is working for the weekend. That's not that's mm-hmm. not Hedge. That was so not Hedge. <laughs> I made myself laugh. Stop trying to make Hedge happen. Oh, jeez, yes! Nice. Nicely done. Uh, while they're having this, this one-sided dance party, as you say, uh, uh, a character named Lisa flashes her boobs because... Why not? Why not? Um, because Bill Hinsman told her to. Yes. Uh, because she was willing to do that, he won't have to rip her shirt open later. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, boy. Small, small, uh, small prize. Yeah. yeah. So now we have our tractor zombie man. He, he's a zombie now because he yeah, wakes fle- up after being bitten. Flesh Eater 2 enters the game and growls directly into camera, as all Arr. Flesh Eaters must. Hey, they're trained by the master. <laughs> yep. Two of the, the uh, fun-loving kids run off to go make out <laughs> in a barn. And Jeffrey... Uh, folks, if you've been listening to this show for a while, you know that we love Mumblecore. Oh my Not god. Not Mumblecore movies. No, no, no. Mumblecore <laughs> characters... In random 80s shit. Oh and this God. chick is She's like... amazing. <laughs> I love her so much. So I, I was watching this with my partner. And uh, they said that, that this, this actress delivers all of her lines with all the excitement of a mom whose child brought home a report card of all straight C's. <laughs> Uh, um she i don't remember the character's name i never I picked it up i tried man. she looks to me like uh <laughs> one of my favorite musicians her name is jan terry i think you need to look her up immediately okay. uh and i i need you to play a song of hers uh, it's a halloween song called get down goblin and you okay. need to insert it right here <gasps> Oh, that lady. Okay, <laughs> both, I actually know who she is. She kind of looks like Jan Terry, and she sounds exactly like her. <laughs> Let's just say if she uh, had some kids and, and, and you know, yeah, aged yeah, yeah. naturally aged. as we all do. <laughs> aged like Pennsylvanians do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happily drop drop that in there. Um, 
Was was Jan Terry? Was she from freaking Florida? Oh, was God, she a Florida she might person? Be. She might be. I'll look. I'll look into it. I hope she yeah. is. Uh, there, there's some. There's a Florida reference in this that is very oh near and dear to my heart. We'll get to that when we get to that. I cried when I, <laughs> when I heard that one. <laughs> I can't wait. So um, he's not into it. Her 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 dude's like, hey, I thought you know we were just gonna come out here and talk, you know, and she's like. No, I really want to. And she delivers all these great lines to seduce him. It totally works. Then she gives him a very firm tonguing. And he gives her a very uh, firm nipple munching. Oh, boy. Uh, but here's what's great. Their makeout <laughs> sounds on the soundtrack. Like, there's a lot of bad sound in this movie. Not, like, the worst I've ever seen, obviously. But there's some, like, noticeable hiss that kicks in, especially when certain characters are about to speak. So they didn't really like clean up the audio a lot. Hey, no prob. But uh, their makeout sounds are crystal clear HD quality sound effects. Which is mouth smack and horror. And actually, that's what raised the dead. <laughs> Listen, uh, they weren't getting paid much, so they were going to enjoy themselves. Damn uh, right. There. Mm. She's like, I'll show my boobs now so that, you know, Bill doesn't have to rip my top later. And it works. <laughs> It it does yeah that, I guess that was like the rule. Um, so <laughs> Bill bursts in, zombie Bill bursts in, and he gives the uh, the couple, especially the guy, a very bad pitchfork review. Oh, true. Oh. They got a they got a zero point zero <laughs> for their mumblecore album. <laughs> oh, uh, boy, all so... throughout this, as as <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, no, I, I thought I f- discovered her name, but I just kept referring to her in my notes as Jan. Uh, <laughs> Jan, uh, uh, all throughout this, as um, Hinsman is taking a pitchfork and is just murdering uh, the other guy, yes. um, Jan just keeps moaning, no, <laughs> no, with total indifference. There is and so many instances of people just watching shit happen. And uh, Hinsman uh, responds by punching her through the tummy and pulling out her heart. Yep. <laughs> and takes a little munch. All throughout which she's saying nothing. She's making no sounds during any of this. Um, in the trivia, it says that they forgot to tell Bill that was a real pig's heart. What? They, they, they had, a, they had a, a fake heart, but it didn't look good. So they did a, a pig's heart. So when he pulled it out and took a bite, they were like, oh, Bill, don't. And he was like, what? And like, that's a real pig's art. And he was really grossed out. That's and Somehow he didn't notice while it was in it. Okay. Well, he's not big on details. <laughs> hey. Wow. I'm hoping the microphone is picking up the thunder in the background. That's pretty cool. Ooh, spooky. Add to our spookiness. It probably isn't. <laughs> so back with the kids uh oh, yes, they have not go. noticed the well they will notice but they haven't yet noticed the their missing friends and uh someone suggests frisbee oh this is so good and i wrote i don't know if this is a line or if this is just how i felt like the reaction was but i heard frisbee you fuck we're here to drink beer yeah that's pretty much the reaction they're like why you want to ruin it? Hey, you know, like that. And you're like, what are you talking? How is that ruining? Okay, fine. We won't play fucking Frisbee. We'll sit here and drink. And then we have our, our chill farmer arrive to them. Um, is he farmer Dave? I can't recall. He must be because I'm looking at the credits and there's tractor driver and farmer Dave. So they're both tractor men. Uh, well, He's the one who has like is letting them stay on his farmland for some reason, and he's like both annoyed but also kind of chill. Yes, um, and he's the one who'll be doing most of the uh, accompanying munching, uh, the, the accompanying <laughs> flesh eating, you might say, throughout much of the movie. Um, he's really cool. I like him. Yeah, they, they like to uh, uh, abuse his kindness. Uh, yeah. So. Eddie scares one of the couples and uh, they call him an asshole and, you know, they're really pissed at him. He has this really goofy uh, executioner mask that I think was one of those masks that was advertised in the back of like every Fangoria ever. Uh-huh. And, and uh, they they call him an asshole because they're getting firewood so they don't freeze to death overnight yeah. uh, in this thing, in this uh, woods area. And they ask him to carry a piece of wood as punishment for scaring them. And he goes, <laughs> and he scoffs and he throws the wood. I'm like, God, Eddie rules. I actually wrote in my notes, Eddie 
rules. Well, see, I actually am anti-Eddie, and it's because during this scene, after he pranks them and they're mad, he says, wait, what's the big deal? I thought we were here to have fun. My question is then, why the fuck weren't you dancing, Eddie? The song says very clearly, if you're having fun, you know you want to dance. Or play frisbee. Or play frisbee. I mean... (laughs) Dancing first, Frisbee second. But. Uh, so they annoy the tractor man by asking him to buy them some beers for when they get back because we're running low on brewskis. Uh, I think they're drinking Iron Beer or something. I forget the name of the brand. Iron City Beer or something because they actually thank them in the credits. <laughs> uh, which I will try to find a freaking beer commercial for that brand. Every day after joyful day, hundreds of thousands of men lay down the tools of their work and come together for that one supreme moment, the beer after work. Iron City Beer, after work. It has a taste that's bold, cold, alive every sip of the way. Iron City, once you get there, you'll never want to leave. Uh, But also... They're like, oh, and and tell him to pick up some cigarettes. I want a pack of Cools. So I'll try to find a cool cigarette commercial to drop in here. Cool. Cool filter longs. Stylishly long. Tastefully cool. Cool filter longs. Style to be extra long with a taste to be extra cool. A cigarette that puts it all together. Come all the way up to cool filter longs. Let it be cool. Stylishly long. Let it be cool. Our pal, Tastefully cool. Uh, Lisa, I don't know how I remember her name. She is the one who's going to go ask the tractor man about the frickin' cools. But she witnesses the tractor man getting killed by the other tractor driving zombie (laughs) tractor and and tractor violence yeah that's ironic as fuck and i looked up the definition for irony it's exactly this that actually the dictionary literally cites this sequence of the film thank you Uh, irony is a bloody trucker hat (laughs) john Deere. lisa witnesses this this murder as he's getting his throat bit because that's what, what we do and she runs away, uh, but don't worry, Zombie Bill gets her. Mm, he's always there. Her shoulder, and her it, flesh looks a little papery. You know, I was complimenting the uh, the <laughs> the gore, but it's this this particular shot doesn't look so good. Well, they can't all be winners, you know. No. Her boyfriend rescues her from Bill. She hit he hits him uh, with a freaking stick, and they run off, rejoining the the folks, the gang, the good time Charlies. And the plan is to go to the farmhouse nearby. Definitely not ripping off any other film where they'd go (laughs) hide in a farmhouse. Never seen a movie like that before in my life. No. Uh, And the others, they're going to go look for the sexy couple who disappeared earlier. And so, I mean, we have two zombie people, men, zombie, I'm excuse me, two zombie tractor men. So I'm like, I'm freaking dude. This is freaking me out. (laughs) And the zombie, the couple, uh, they find the couple uh, dead and now they're zombies <sighs> okay so our our main couple just because they survived the longest <laughs> out of all these people they go and hide in the this uh cellar of this yeah. house it's and they're bob gonna avoid and all sally bob and sally thank you oh, God, i had no idea the fuck their names were <laughs> well yeah that's the thing they're not the ones that you would expect to make it i mean they seem nice yeah, they're... like you know for the for this group they seem nice um, but they're totally <laughs> indistinguishable. Like, they don't have any characteristics other than Eddie refuses to let them come into the boarded up house. Oh, my God. That's not even boarded up yet. He just rejects them. Eddie. Oh, this is one of my favorite things about this movie that just makes me laugh so hard because of my knowledge of zombie movies, of having sat through way more seasons of The Walking Dead than any normal person should ever do. I have seen all this shit. And so for a right. film to skip the explanation of why <laughs> the zombies are the way they are, which I'm used to that, but to see people who aren't in a sequel, technically understanding that there is a zombie threat 
that -hmm. they need to barricade themselves in very specifically using hammer nails and spare wood to uh, barricade doors. And they know to find weapons because there's more coming without really saying it. But I really love how quickly people turn on each other in this. Yes. So quickly. Oh boy. And of course, Eddie is the one who's the fucking idiot. That's like, Oh God, we're going to be stuck with this guy the entire movie. But surprisingly, (laughs) no, like five minutes, maybe. (laughs) And that's, I'm going to go ahead and compliment this movie here. The worst thing that could have happened to flesh eater at this stage is if it was the siege movie, the rest of the movie. It's not at all. And that's so beautiful. Like it's because it's this part and it's the very end that feel like a community theater production of Night of the Living Dead, the musical. But the rest of it just goes in such a bizarre and kind of like a greatest hits type. Uh, Like this feels like a gore reel. Yes. After this point, it's just like, here's another scene where somebody dies. Here's another scene. Right. Um, um, but we do play this out a little bit, you know, with yeah. Eddie, Eddie pointing a gun at Ralph, the leader of this crew, who then immediately disarms him and points it back. And Eddie's like, please don't shoot E. <laughs> this is all in the first 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. There's an hour oh, left. God. Yes. During the siege, we have all these little fun, stupid moments. Uh, one of the girls choose on the three words oh my god so perfectly <laughs> where she's saying oh my god oh my like, god oh my god it's so oh adorable. my god oh, no. uh, we see eddie can't nail a door shut to save his life literally can't save his life this is the other thing about these zombies is they have super strength they do yeah ahead of oh. the curve ahead of the curve Oh my lord! And they're using tools like like the the you know the Romero zombies would you know pick up tools and stuff. My favorite moment during this, besides oh my god, is when uh, I think it's Ralph calls yes! the police yes! and uh, receives this this uh, very sassy, bespectacled female police dispatcher who <laughs> who asks him when he says like there's some monsters attacking us. She's like. Is this a monster? Is this monster a Godzilla type or Frankenstein type of monster? Holy shit, that's so good! Oh my god! Ah, <laughs> uh, she, yeah, she's she's gonna take her time. Elietta made a joke. She said because she eventually does call the cops. She gets off the phone with them when the the line gets cut and goes back to reading her magazine. And, mm-hmm. and then later she'll actually call an actual police officer. You know, like, uh, that's out on the road. She's an actual police officer. But yeah. she calls after she finishes her article. Like, she's oh, I'll get on it as soon as I get done with this advice mm-hmm. column or whatever. That's what Lieta thought. Listen, she's just here to have fun. <laughs> hey, you're not dancing. Um, the vampires, oops, I said it by accident. The zombies act like vampires in a couple shots where they're just literally draining yeah. the life force out of one dude. From yeah. his neck, I they love give him, that. They give him like a double hickey. It's, <laughs> it's. I think it's his girlfriend, and then the the chill farmer, just like. Hey, it's the threesome he always wanted, but was scared to ask for. So all of this shit happens. We finally get the cop called. They call an officer who's who takes the call, and he's going to head out to that farm. But we have some very important business because we have to switch to an entirely different set of characters which will happen a few more times <laughs> it sure will <laughs> yeah because all of ours are dead like they're all yeah. gone except for the two bob and sally who were hiding um so uh, we we enter into a you know a very casual full nude pre-shower scene what the fuck hinsman you dog this is Susan, who is either <laughs> the wife or the nope. babysitter or the oldest daughter of this family. I don't freaking know. Def, I don't think. Yeah, she's. I think she's like a like a like a live in nanny or like a, an au pair of some kind because she is definitely not older sister. Nope. She because like the mother says when my husband gets home, you do not talk to your daughter about your husband. <laughs> so yeah, very strange because she definitely know. lives there too. Because <laughs> she's naked and taking a shower. She has a room. Yeah. Oh brother, it is so strange. I love it, but <laughs> even so, like, how long has she been there? Where the lady wouldn't just say, "Oh, we're yeah. waiting for Frank to get home," not exactly. my husband. So strange. Uh, but the most. <laughs> impressive are these two kids we got the two essential children 
Uh, Chris <laughs> is the hobo kid and his sister who's dressed as a little angel. I cannot remember her name. Well, her uh, name is Heidi, and she Heidi. is, uh, I believe, Bill Hinsman's daughter, because her name is oh. Heidi Hinsman. Oh, she's a little fairy, very uh, or angel. And Bonnie Hinsman is the mother, so that <gasps> I wonder if that it's is a family a, affair. It's a family affair. He That's killed so his cute. family. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I did not know any of that. That's so great. So thank IMDb. They are making caramel apples, mm-hmm. and Chris is about to eat one, and his sister is like. <gasps> Mom said we couldn't have one till later. And he looks at her and says in the best freaking kid way, who cares? <laughs> when he <laughs> whirls around and you see that he's wearing a little hobo costume, it just melts my heart. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh, boy. Halloween doesn't have to be spooky. Not with Easter Seal Safe Halloween Coupons, the safe treat that gives treatment. Safe Halloween Coupons are good for treats at stores and restaurants. Give them to trick-or-treaters or treat yourself. Give Easter Seal Safe Halloween Coupons because Halloween should be warm and friendly. Coupon books available at Area Burger Kings, NCNB Banks, and AMC Theaters. Why so glum, chum? I lost all my trick-or-treat candy. Take some of mine. Wow! Hershey bars, Mr. Good Bar, Kit Kats, Rulos, Watchamacallits, Reese's, all my favorites. Let's go get some more. Sure. Let me go ask my mom. Nobody says boo to Hershey's. Here's a good idea for Halloween, Wrigley's gum. My kids love it, and it's the treat I approve of. That's because I know Wrigley's spearmint, double mint, juicy fruit, or big red gum is a wholesome treat for kids. It won't spoil their appetites. Each stick is neatly wrapped, ready to hand out, and there's great value in a variety of package sizes. I like this new 50 stick bag. Wrigley's gum is the best idea for Halloween. Get the wholesome Halloween treat kids love, Wrigley's gum. Uh, Mom allows Heidi to give candy at the door when there's a, a knock at the door. And she's like, uh, only one piece of flesh for each trick-or-treater, Heidi. <laughs> and I'm like, what? But then she's giving out full-size candy bars, so boom. Yeah. But of course, it's not a trick-or-treater at the door. It is Mr. Bill Zombie Boy. Mr. And Bill. Uh, he, she asks him about his costume, right? <laughs> I forget. I think so. Yeah. Like, what are you supposed to be? And then he picks her up and then we just see their feet as he like munches and the blood yes. pours down on the dropped candy bar. And oh. one of the trivia is that the, uh, the, the candy bar is a made up fake candy bar called crunch with a K. And that was one of Bill's jokes he thought was really funny. Um, because he's crunching her flesh. Yeah, I couldn't read it, but the second uh-huh, I saw that, I was uh-huh. like, that ain't real. What is this? Is that, like, uh-huh. is that a special Pennsylvania type of candy bar? Uh, so, yes, he, so Heidi has, has been gotten, uh, and then he goes after good old Susan in her towel. He eats her, her throat, and he, he chases her around the room, and he bites her throat. But then after he's done eating her throat, he has to rip the towel off. Mm. and then bite her some more not classy i'd say that's one of the other i mean maybe it's three things i don't like about this movie <laughs> bill's <laughs> it's just not creepy. classy yeah bill's just a little trashy yeah oh boy i'm sure his I mean, wife was very glad for this moment i i believe it's also just very cynical like i i'm based on his interview this was just about money yeah this wasn't oh, is... he didn't eat the flesh for the art uh, oh, so yeah, I think that explains much of the uh, the nudity we get, which is a fair amount. Yeah. Um, we also get here the moment. I mean, really, the the fight we've been waiting for since a zombie first fought a shark, and it's zombie versus hobo. Who wins? <laughs> well, it's, it's zombie. Really, it's quickly, zombie. Yeah. I, I do like the movie for going after the kids, and and the kids aren't oh, yeah. like miraculously saved. That's pretty good. I mean, actually, nobody is is off limits here. Everybody dies. 
Oh. Spoiler. Oh, no. So, um... Dad final, comes home. Yes, thank you. Right? Yeah. Yes, uh, Dad comes home to get uh, wasted by the zombies. Um, you know, he's his uh, own hot meal after a long day of work. <laughs> There's a great shot where the kids and mom are all zombies munching on them, and then the naked Susan comes out, and they very carefully have not had her on set with the children. They cut very... Uh, yeah. And I was like, oh, whew, that actually made me nervous for a second. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> Um, then we have the, the cop who was dispatched out yes. to, oh, where, where is he? Where is he when he gets that? <coughs> I think he goes to the farmhouse. He goes to the farmhouse. Yeah. yeah. But he starts like within seconds, he figures out to shoot these guys in the head. Right. And he also gets bitten himself and then proceeds to like, spit out his lines of dialogue so fast and so hilariously like uh, telling the dispatch lady what's happening stuff we've already <laughs> seen but he's delivering his lines hideously it's awesome I, re- I would say he has the best line of dialogue in the movie <laughs> when he says to the dispatcher quote they're trying to kill my ass <laughs> You oh, know, I'm going to play this dialogue. You know so that fun. feel when the kids are trying to kill your ass. Yep. Uh, uh, so even though you, he managed... <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I'm just going to say it. All cops are lunch meat. <laughs> A-C-A-L. Oh, boy. Make that a flag. I'll wave it. Terry! God damn it, Terry! I'm on the radio! These bits on the radio. I need help quick. I'm a Spencer's five. These kids have turned into maniacs. They're trying to kill my ass. Send help! I wounded and these kids are not human! I shot one in the chest that never phased it, but I, I shot two in the head and I think they're dead! So, I'm sorry, oh boy. I'm just trying to kill a bug. We had a gnat. And I'm choking. Pardon me. This will be fun to edit later. Oh yeah. Uh-uh. Okay. <clears throat> So after blowing some some of these zombies away, he gets killed himself. Then the kids hear that the gunshots have, have stopped. The ones in the basement, Sally and Bobo. Damn this gnat! Kill it. So professionalism. I'm on, I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> so so they come out and they show their heads like the freaking Groundhog's Day. <laughs> they come out of the basement and. They run to the police car where they find the gnarly, chewed up freaking cop. Mm-hmm. Uh, they use his gun to kill a couple of zombies themselves. I killed that gnat, by the way. <laughs> it's it's Halloween, so he'll be haunting me. Yeah, I mean, with gnats, you have to get them in the head. <laughs> Destroy the brain. Destroy the brain. Kill the gnat. Uh, so... <laughs> The uh, we cut to even more characters. Uh, New we cut ones. to the the husband and wife, the kind of like country folks who are bitching about trick or treaters. He's, I and, believe, he's Farmer Ned. Oh, brother! He's bitching about who's going to feed them horses, and of course, because he's a good husband, he agrees to share in the chores. I mean, he just wants her to stop nagging, and yeah. he's like, "Well, all right, fine. I'll go give the horses their beer." <laughs> Iron City. The survivors, uh, our, our, our buddies uh, from the basement, they show up to get help from the horseman, and we get everyone shouting. Everyone is shouting, shouting, shouting. And he's like, oh, I'll help you. And I'm like, oh, my God. Speaking of Altman, everyone talking over each other. It's a good, it's a good comparison, sir. <laughs> Now we cut to the news station where we get even more characters. Some hard biting TV journalism about Visa and MasterCard escort services. Oh boy. It's like we're transitioning into Dawn of the Dead territory now, right? Yes, with the the cynical view of the news. And dude, I love this part. This is so all of the shit about what's going on in the local area is fascinating and fucking hilarious. Hmm. We get the we get the grizzled old newsman who's tired of this shit, and then we get the 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 plucky young reporter or the the plucky long uh, young news lady who's there next to him, 
And he reads the copy about the zombie monster invasion and goes, oh no, hands it to her right before they go back in there. And he goes, here, you read this. And she's like, what? (laughs) Oh, such a great touch. I love that shit. And it's not long after this that uh, my favorite joke happens. So have you heard this one before? Uh, A chicken, a Dracula, and a hula hood. What? (laughs) Oh, gotta start that over. Uh, What? A chicken, a Dracula, and a... I wasn't even drunk when I wrote these. A chicken, a Dracula, and a hula skirt ornament at, walk into the Haystack Halloween bash. That's all I got. And you, you weren't drunk when you wrote that? I wasn't drunk when I wrote that. <laughs> that sounds like one of my jokes, man. You're slipping. Oof, oof, oof. <laughs> hey, you made me laugh. Well, I try. Oh, you know what I got confused about? It's, yeah, it's, I wrote, it looks like a hood ornament. Cause it's like, she's dressed up in her hula skirt. Oh, at the party. Yeah, at the party. Cause we're at the party now. Oh, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We got the horseman, the horseman's wife watching TV and he comes in with the kids. And he's like, honey, there's something going on. And she stands up and oh, she's a zombie already. She's, she was bitten by a zombie and sat down to watch TV. I freaking love it. So then zombies all well, that's, burst That's in. what we call social commentary, Richard. Oh, shit. Bill Hinsman, freaking satirist. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone bursts in, all the zombies, all the good time Charlies with, you know, they got holes in their denim, bleeding out, biting everybody. Our friends who have escaped all these situations escape yet again. To go to the Halloween party. Yay. Finally. Man. Um, uh, this is, in my notes, the lamest Halloween party ever. Now, and I mean for the people who are attending it, not for the viewers at home. For the viewers at home, it's a great party because it's hilarious. No one seems happy to be there um, <laughs> besides the two people who are dancing. And we know to dance oh is to have God. fun. Um it is, uh, they're listening to the radio. They're listening to someone named Mad Mike. Yes. Mike to Mike May AM playing the tunes. Uh, they've got like one little cooler full of beer. Um, and they're basically just like sitting in their uh, groups, checking out each other's asses. Everybody there. Um, yes. We do, we do learn that to check out ass is only human. Like that's just what we do <laughs> as humans. <laughs> I love that, yeah, they have the scene of the guys uh, ogling the girls, the girls complaining about the guys ogling, but then they ogle as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's They give some advice to the witch costume girl. She's like, why did everyone dress sexy? I should have known. I should have dressed sexy too. So they explain how she can turn her witch costume into a magical sexy witch costume by grabbing the neck of her costume and ripping it down her shoulder. <laughs> Well, and the even, least sexy thing I ever. I don't even think they rip it. They just push it down her oh, shoulder. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, right? they just stretch just, it out. Just a little bit of shoulder. It's so awful looking. Like, Much <laughs> better. She looked fine. Oh, uh, We have the nastiest flirtatious couple who sneak off to go make out just like the other couple earlier. But there's some comic relief putting in quotes where she's like, I'm just serious. I'm not a slut. Yeah, Paul. And he's like, Paul, my name's Steve. And she's like, yeah, right, uh, Steve. <laughs> I don't even know Paul. And I just felt like it was like eight-year-old Kevin Smith was watching this and going, I can do better one day. I there's will a, have better dialogue than this. I mean, there's an absolutely terrible line where she's like, my roommate said all you guys would do is drink beer and rape us girls. <laughs> Oh my god. They they go off to make out and our friends, our, our survivors, break into the party and they try to warn everyone. But uh the Dracula. <laughs> Andy Dracula, yeah. Is played by Andrew Sands, who was also in the production. Yes, he was. He he he's, was he's uh, interviewed in that uh that thirty minute documentary, yeah. Yes. He was uh also in uh, Surf Nazis Must Die. Hell he yeah. was a production coordinator. Uh, he was a production assistant on Two Evil Eyes <laughs> and uh, Night of the Living Dead remake. Uh, he was also an assistant uh, production coordinator on Silence of the Lambs. 
Mm-hmm. And Argento's trauma. What? A weird career. <laughs> yeah, I guess getting hooked up with uh, Romero got you some gigs. I would describe his performance here as Vladbert Gottfried. Um, it's a weird, <laughs> extremely affected uh, oh my God. performance of a drunk individual. I love this part. He's he's so he's a Dracula, and he's got the the blood drawn on his face, and he's so wasted. But he's like. Oh my god, he's too drunk not to be awesome. Like mm-hmm. I love this guy. As he's denying that there's any zombies happening, he's mad. Oh, he's the, oh my god, sorry. He says the best line in the fucking movie. He's like he drunkenly says something to the effect of I don't care about who isn't here. The people who are here are the most awesome people in the universe. <laughs> fucking incredible oh my god i can't believe i almost missed that totally sober thing to say he also says hey somebody has to drink all of this beer (laughs) not but it no dude it shouldn't just be you you stupid fuck and when uh uh, when when um i can't remember who he says this to i think it might be to bob and sally uh, because they arrive at the party yeah yeah and uh he he asked them where are your costumes you look like shit Shit. (laughs) (laughs) oh boy oh my god i love him so much i wish the whole movie was about the party oh boy because the thing about the party is they have no extras it's like that's it 12 people Mm. 10 people it's a very small party that's what's so great because they have space for a huge party but there's nobody there (laughs) and i feel like this is such a uh, this scene and the opening scene lead me to think like this is operating on a similar level to Hack a Lantern to the degree that I think they'd make a wonderful double feature. Absolutely. This one comes after though, because like, you know, at the at the Halloween uh barn party at the end of uh Hack a Lantern, there are a lot of people. Here oh, you yeah. got nobody. You got nobody at all. So <laughs> it's like we're one. clearing out for the night. They're clearing out no the other people left for the after party. The after party is the Hack a Lantern party. Exactly. <laughs> the party gets rocking when all the zombies show up. Uh, there's three girls, our, our three fun gals, stand in the corner and scream while all their dates get eaten. Mm-hmm. No one does anything to really fight the zombies, uh, except the, the the flirtatious couple. I forgot to mention, she's dressed like a poodle skirt, kind of like a 50s gal, and he's dressed like a ninja, <laughs> but without the ninja costume. He just like has like a, a vague... Um, pajamas that sort of looks like he might be training for martial arts yeah i honestly couldn't figure it out i thought it was like like if a mechanic was in dragon ball z (laughs) oh boy it's so good and she's Uh, described as being dressed like a cheerleader which is oh cheerleader i overthought it it. no but i think yours is a lot closer honestly oh boy it's not a good costume so he he goes to be the hero and he immediately gets killed uh, Bill shows up and deblouses another girl, rips another top off because whatever. <laughs> mm. So after the party munching happens, we cut to the next morning, like very jarringly, we cut to the next day. Uh, by the way, our survivors have survived once again. I mean, their strategy works. Just book it. Yeah. Get the fuck out of there. They go hide again. We'll find out where they're hiding shortly. And then we get hunters be hunting to... Now, here's when the movie just, it feels like a Night of the Living Dead utter ripoff where we have the next morning and even have the reporter, the grizzled old reporter from earlier. He shows up. He asks, he is, he's like the world's quietest newscaster with the world's longest question. It's like, I don't, I don't, I didn't write down exactly what he said because it was so insane, but I came up with an approximation. It's like, could this have anything to do with the farmhouse killings that occurred once upon a time way back when in the first half of this motion picture entertainment produced, written, directed, and catered by William Hinsman? Maybe. He asks about satanic cults, if it's satanic <laughs> cults, and they got all these people shooting zombies in a field. And we have lots of just, just, this is where the movie loses it for me. Not completely, but just, no, it's still fun. It's still fun, but it's just like such a paltry 
version of of uh, freaking Night of Living Dead because we get the rednecks hunting zombies. But it's uh, so there great. is a funny moment where the the girl who is dressed as the hula skirt girl is is she's a zombie and the one guy screams, "Don't shoot her! It's my daughter for that's, Christ's sake! That's my ding dang daughter! That's my ding dang <laughs> robot dancing zombie daughter! Hold your fire!" Oh, they See, I away. I totally disagree. I love this because it happens all really quickly, and it's it's so nice to see all of our old friends again. That is true. That is true. I had we not also, thought of it that way. <laughs> we also have this really amazing moment where um, when they're going into the, the house, uh, you know, family plus Sally house, oh, uh, yeah. where the hunter pockets some candy from the trick or treat bowl <laughs> on his way inside. You know, oh, all that boy. zombie hunting works up an appetite for a crunch bar. Oh, that is so good. So they, they, they shoot uh, the little girl zombie and the mom and the, and the, uh, the freaking kid. The hobo kid. Uh, in the trivia, it's the Bill did the um, the blanks himself. He packed the blanks and the gun himself. And when the guy shoots at the ground, you know they're showing the view of him pointing the rifle at the ground to shoot the little girl. Luckily, that little girl wasn't anywhere near the gun because he shot the cameraman in the foot. Jesus Christ! What? And the the blank, the piece of uh, cardboard or whatever had came out of the gun with such force it like went through the dude's foot <clears throat> went through the went through the cameraman's foot <laughs> wow good job bill Caramba. and he uses that to te- he uses that to teach people hire a professional to do your blanks uh-huh. <laughs> you think <laughs> fifty nine thousand dollars was paying the lawsuit to that guy's <laughs> foot doctor <laughs> oh yes yeah, so i'm glad you caught that i forgot about the candy I think none of the rednecks get eaten. They're all fine. Yeah, they're good. <clears throat> they all know how to handle this zombie apocalypse in a universe where apparently that happened before. Mm-hmm. Which is what's so funny about uh, John Russo's book, The Dawn of the Dead, is that they actually were successful in stopping the zombie invasion the first time. Mm-hmm. And the book takes place years later when it's just accepted that if someone dies, you have to shoot them in the head. Mm-hmm. that they'll come back from the dead so it becomes like this cultural thing and then of course something gets screwed up and a bunch of zombies get created and That's we have always happening it is not a good book i recommend it just kind of because it's short but it feels really it has all these things that mirror the first story that it's uh a little disappointing but i think i want other people to share my pain mm-hmm Kind of like that, that uh, Skip Inspector book I was telling you about before we started recording. Mm-hmm. I want people to share my pain. Anyway, so the lovers are hiding. Our, our pals are, are hiding in a shed. They've <laughs> upgraded from the cellar to a shed or a farmhouse. And uh, they have these confessions of love where they, they very <laughs> cutely decide to, to come out of the closet as lovers to each other. And they want to get married. Mm-hmm. But then they have a plan. And the plan is, let's go to Tampa. <laughs> let's move to Tampa and start our beautiful life. The future lies ahead, oh, is her sorority no. motto. Um, but the future is more like blown up heads. The second that she said Tampa, I was like, like even if you've never seen a horror movie before, I feel like the second she says Tampa, it's like, oh, oh they're dead. <laughs> Time <laughs> to die. Been, have you been to this city? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I... Folks, I've been a Tampa resident since 1999, and uh, I moved here because I I was in Palm Beach, which is infinitely worse, Mm -hmm. if you can imagine how, like, take Tampa, but then make it boring. (laughs) They don't even got any dance in there. I know. Nobody, everyone just dances and tries to get their partner to get up, and they won't. That's part Mm -hmm. of the rules. They get did you could 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 they get did you get shot. It's fucking hilarious. I mean, it's so funny because they are clearly not zombies. They are not shambling around. Yeah. They're not trying to eat anyone. Yeah. That is literally walking out. They blow her away first, mm-hmm. and he starts. He falls to check on her and starts screaming, "No, no, you bastards!" or whatever he <laughs> says. It's clear that he is not one of the undead. Yeah. And they blow him away a split second later. It's great. Yeah. And they set Better the than barn. moving to Tampa is death. 
I mean, at least it's quick. And then they set the barn on fire. Which is the money shot, and I could hear Brad's voice in my head. It's called production value, Richard. Because, <laughs> man, they yeah. burn the shit. It's very impressive. I mean, that party was a real barn burner. <laughs> what was that movie with the <laughs> barn burner? What was that movie where she, it was like, uh, I don't know. That lady who is married to Paul Newman, I forget. She was like, barn burner. <laughs> <laughs> you got me i hate that fucking line it's barn like that's a like that's a plague on fucking america was barn burners i don't know (laughs) folks use your googles i'll tell you later use use your googs (laughs) so then we get uh the cleanup of the zombies after the barn has burned to the ground we have one police officer who who pulls up and starts walking around um uh surveying the damage from the fire and finding a bunch of grody looking corpses and man these are some, speaking of impressive freaking effects, these corpses are nasty. Yeah, for sure. But then he finds a live one. We got a live one. He finds Bill. Or oh, Bill finds him. Bill. And Bill rips the guy's top off and, and fondles his <laughs> breasts before he chews his head <laughs> off then, or whatever. Uh, roll credits. After he screams into the camera and we get our... our, our The thing they probably did the animation off of was his... At the camera. And that's it. That's that's freaking flesh eater. True boy. Well, my oh, flesh God. sure got eaten. How about yours, Richard? My top got ripped off by Bill. Zombie wow. Bill had to get a good look at my knockers. <laughs> <laughs> so how my, do you like this me. one? I'm sorry. My 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 Halloween bobbins. <laughs> Halloween <laughs> bazungas. <laughs> Wasn't that what they called them in uh, in uh, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark? Did you see her bazoombas? Bazoombas. Oh my god. So yeah. Um, let's see if I have any more trivia. I've got some trivia. But I was gonna uh, read. Let's see. Um, the, the title is taken from one of the original titles for Night of the Living Dead, which was Night of the Flesh Eaters. And of course it's based on, you know, Bill Hinsman's scintillating performance as the first zombie in night of living dead i i learned from the interview that everyone was paid 25 dollars a day yes except for the gaffer who was apparently a professional and he was played he was paid slightly more and felt so guilty about it that he went and bought like chips and pretzels to serve as craft services which would not have been provided otherwise <laughs> oh my god it's so good the uh one whoever wrote the trivia for imdb was a little snarky they wrote, notice that Bill Hinsman, who basically ripped this idea off from Night of the Living Dead, where he played the graveyard zombie, is the only zombie who gets to touch any of the women who are either nude or partially undressed. Woo! That, that's honestly, that, that's so weird. That is, it's, um, it's weird, but I love the way they wrote it. It's so I snarky. Mean, yeah. Who basically ripped off? Which movie are you watching? <laughs> Apparently, uh, Vincent D. Servinsky, who plays the posse gunman, he was also in original Night of the Living Dead as basically the same character. Mm. That's incredible. What else? You got anything else from that uh, beautiful making of? Um, no, that's the only trivia I've got. I have I have some quotes from people about the movie that, that are very similar to my own feelings. Oh, let's hear them. Yeah. Um, so personally, I love this movie. Um, I feel so bad that I slept on it for so long. Again, I think the title uh, and its its pedigree, the the Hins factor, probably kept me away from it for too long. <laughs> because this movie is like a machine. It's just wall to wall goodness. Like there's no <laughs> significant story to speak of i mean there's re- uh, no I, i'm sorry this movie is all story and no plot like there's no interesting causality between any of the actions but it's definitely like a, this happened and this happened and this happened and this happened so i think it's i can't imagine i don't know why anybody would dislike this movie <laughs> like if you like horror movies and you like seeing stupid shit in horror movies you're gonna love this movie because that's all it is um strung together for 88 minutes i feel like i also admire how it keeps you on your on your toes 
um, by sort of setting you up for one thing and then saying, nah, we're done with that. Here's something else. Yeah. And then here's something else. I can sum up the movie in total from two quotes from the uh, the documentary on the Shrieks Show DVD. Um, one is one of the special effects guys. I didn't note his name, but he's one of the special effects guys. He said, quote, we had a lot of laughs. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, <laughs> and then Andy Sands, Andy Dracula, said, quote, most consecutive solid fun. Also agree. That's that's how I would describe this movie. A oh, lot of consecutive shit solid fun i love that <laughs> so so how do you feel about this one richard i like this very much um i don't love it but i suspect uh, this is my second viewing and i know i'm going to be repeating this every halloween season mm -hmm. because it is such a great fall movie um and i could see eventually uh, getting to love this one so it's right on the edge of that uh, like i said the things i don't like the score separate from the movie is good i don't know what they did wrong with the score uh there's just something wrong with it i'm not sure i don't like the parts where it just mimics night of the living dead especially at the end because this movie feels like it has like three endings <laughs> that gets a little burnt but it's not a long movie so who cares exactly um i love the party sequence the fall leaves are everywhere it is clearly shot if not in fall then it's like a nice Oh, it's fall. It's it 100% looks, fall. Okay, it's a fall time. It's been a long time. I've been in Florida forever, so I kind of don't remember what fall <laughs> yeah. looks like anymore. Big, big <laughs> ass brown dead leaves on the ground. It's fall. My expectations when I bought this really paid off because they were in the toilet. So, of mm. course, once you don't get flushed down the toilet, it's only you just work your way up from there. Basically, you're climbing up the tank of the toilet and you're, hey, this is okay. Yeah, you um, ghouly yourself out of the toilet. <laughs> I'll bite you in the ass. Um, I actually prefer this to uh, The Dead Next Door, which is I get the vibe because, you know, this is a Night of the Living Dead ripoff. Uh, Dead Next Door is not so much a ripoff as a big homage to Dawn of the Dead. I mean, this is way better. Um, yeah, it's I, also I, don't, I don't care for The Dead it Next has, Door. It has way less uh, meandering stuff going on yeah uh, exactly that one feels feel like sister films in a way that one feels so long and it feels like it's trying so hard i appreciate this one isn't really trying no uh, <laughs> don't try so hard just do it <laughs> uh and yeah like i said when we were talking about the first 30 minutes the siege part when we're in, in <laughs> introduced to our our friends our good time charlies if that had been the whole movie which dude i know you have seen a movie like that where it goes really fast in the beginning to set up stuff and then we spend the next hour of a 90 minute movie watching these people talk about the zombies share stories of their past and how it is ironic this is happening to them or just banging things and, and fighting off a zombie horde and that's the whole movie mm -hmm. you know everyone's seen that so this one thing i really love about this is every time you go what is this it doesn't matter what that was it's already moving on to the next thing that's freaking great mm -hmm. yeah so yeah I'm, I'm coming around to it good definitely halloweeny enough for our purposes it has Absolutely. more Halloween in it than frickin' the first Halloween Town movie, which getting a hankering to rewatch that right now, boy. Do it up. Just put it in. Well, sir, thank you for at least uh, taking off your bandages from your amazing mummy costume long enough to speak on this episode. Yeah, I'm gonna go wrap myself back up, <laughs> dig myself a hole, find myself uh, some college kids to <laughs> put some stones down on top of me. Yeah. oh yes bury me forever i don't know why that made me think of uh time walker when you said that i guess it's because i brought up a mummy now every mummy is time walker to me mm -hmm. <laughs> i wish that had a halloween party in it that would have been the fucking best <laughs> but i'm going to uh put my fangs back in uh i had not from my mouth i had some other fangs i don't want to really go into that mm -hmm. but folks have a great halloween uh, Halloween obviously is not canceled. Do what you got to do. Have fun. Freaking spike the punch. You're the only one drinking it if you're quarantined, so you're, you'll be okay with it. I mean, 
I, I don't know how to tell you this, listeners, but where are your costumes? You look like shit. <laughs> that reminds me of that reminds me of Mortuary, where the one guy's like, "Hey, man, you look like shit." And they cut back to the guy. He says it to us: "His perfect hair, perfect clothes." And I'm like, "What? <laughs> how does he look like shit?" But yes, if you do not wear a costume to the party, you could look like shit. Or you could just dress like a piece of shit. Everyone loves that. Hey. Hey. Happy Halloweeners. Bye, folks. Hello, this is The Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is the Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doomedmoviethon.com for the archives. If that's still not enough, go to at doomedmoviethon on Twitter. You can write in to Hello, This is the Doom Show, use the email doomedmoviethon at gmail.com. Doom Show episodes are available on record and 8-track cassette.